I think the biggest challenge facing journalism today, whether you're a journalism practicing journalist, a journalism educator like myself, or a future journalist, is trust. The audience does not trust us. There's a whole host of reasons. I won't get into why that may be the case. It has to do with politics. It has to do with even Twitter. But the most important thing is building a relationship of trust, once again, between the audience and uh, journalism. And there's lots of ways to do that. Most importantly, the journalists need to do a better job of helping the audience understand how we do our job, how we tell our stories. If you were a sick patient and you're trying to figure out what doctor to go to, you're going to ask lots of people's opinions. Maybe you'd even ask your grandma, you know, how do I get better? And grandma probably would have a lot of really good ideas, but grandma's not educated in medicine. And so you need a little bit of your gut check from grandma, but you also need to trust sources that you believe really know how to do journalism. At the Walter Cronkite School, we know how to do journalism, we know how to teach journalism, we know how to research on journalism. And a big part of that research right now centers around audiences and rebuilding trust with audiences. Uh, exactly how did the school that you work at at the moment, the, the Cronkite School, which is part of the Arizona State University, how did did it respond to, to these challenges, to these trust issues? I mean, obviously this is a global phenomenon that trust in the media is decreasing. But what do you recommend how to deal with this? Education is the beginning of understanding and communication is the key to that. And so what we do at the Cronkite School, whether in the classrooms in Phoenix, Arizona, or as our faculty travel to Skopje or other places in the Balkans or literally around the world, we're constantly trying to educate. The first part of good education is listening. What does the student, the global audience, know already? Where are they misunderstanding things and how can we correct that? We go back because of the namesake of the school, Walter Cronkite, to the fundamental belief that journalism is based on sound ethical principles. Quadruple sourcing, uh, sound ethical decision-making and putting forth stories. A strong emphasis that social media has given us on visuals. We have to double check and teach our students how to spot check visuals. They can be manipulated just as easily as words can. So we're constantly teaching the basic fundamentals of fact gathering, writing, storytelling, finding central compelling characters to help us understand a complex issue like the COVID crisis through the eyes of one family or one health practitioner that's experiencing it. But as we do all of this, we're constantly trying to help the audience understand how we're doing our job. There's lots of ways we can help tell the story of how we got the story. And the more we do a better job of telling how we do our job, the more the audience is going to trust us. There's a great quote at where I got my doctorate, which is the University of Missouri School of Journalism, that says, journalists are the schoolmasters of the people, which means they're teachers, fundamentally. And we are. Even if I'm writing a story or producing a TV package, about COVID, I'm teaching the audience who doesn't understand what this strange disease is, how it's contagion, how it works, how it might be stopped. I'm a teacher fundamentally as a journalist. And so what we need to do is understand that that concept of media literacy really is fundamentally embedded in what we do. How journalists have not always been used to that because often we did not want to directly engage with the audience because we didn't want to try to produce stories just for ratings or more clicks on the internet. Somehow that felt wrong, but you know, we were supposed to tell our stories and do our job to help serve society in, in meaningful ways and give citizens the tools they need to make good decisions. We're still doing that. But I think the internet, especially social media on, on the phones, I actually have two of them, have taught that you know we need to engage with the audience and social media allows us to do that there's nothing wrong with talking to the audience and there's nothing wrong with the audience talking back to us and they do that youth in high school are very used to that they're gonna make comments on facebook on twitter on TikTok, on snapchat 
on Instagram, they're gonna hit a like button, they're gonna make a comment, they're gonna be bold and they're gonna say what they think. Wonderful, that's engagement. What the role of journalism education does and great uh, organizations like Metamorphosis do is allow opportunities for those students to harness all that energy and power and then figure out a way for them to do it in a way that's credible, acceptable, and ethical. And by failing to do that, you know, we failed journalism. So, you know, my hat's off to, to your great organization and all the colleagues that work there, because you really are doing an important thing, not only for your country, but through Truth Tracker and some of the other things that you could do to fact check both the politicians and the other media. You're serving the rest of your region, which is a very tough region of the world, important region of the world, but it continues to have challenges. It's complex. Uh, and so, you know, organizations like Metamorphosis is very valuable. You're a, you're a lighthouse in the world of truth for that part of the world. And as the great Cronkite ship tries to sail around the world and help, we are so glad that we can come into your port, share some things with you, you share some things with us, and together we can do things, not for our money, not for our ego, but to really help society in North Macedonia become better. Thank you. So is it possible to, to reconcile the role of, of the, the guardians of the public interest uh, through education and achieve sustainability to attract wider audiences? Well, that is a that is a huge ask. Yes, it's possible. We have to believe it's possible because if not, we can't give ourselves up to the clickbait world or in television, the ratings driven world. There are lots of journalism, pardon me, there are lots of journalists who practice quack journalism, just like there's quack medicine. And, you know, um, sensationalism does sell. It sells tabloids in the paper. It gets, you know, hits on various social media channels in the United States. Um, but the audience, I think, is typically smarter than we often give them credit for. They recognize that, you know, somebody is manipulating them because they put something sensational on the air. And if you give them a chance to look and listen and be taught the differences between sensational news and fake news, how pictures can be manipulated, how facts can be manipulated, that's through media literacy. Then I think you can begin to grow a society that appreciates good journalism, values good journalism, and eventually, even though economies are poor, will find a way that it can be paid for. There's models and there's got to be new ways out there to fund journalism. It's going to be up to organizations like Metamorphosis to figure out how that can happen. That happens first by education. And so by society understanding what the powerful role journalists can play, um, I think audiences recognize that. Even young people recognize that. Audiences need to understand that, need to understand what are the best apps to have. It's called really your media diet. So it's, it's organizations like Metamorphosis that also help teach what's a good media diet for a person to have. And if I'm going to choose a protein, do I choose a chicken or a meat? Do I choose this station or that newspaper? And why? You know? Yes, I know that the Cronkite School, for example, is, uh, as you said, one of the best journalism schools in the United States and most probably in the world, especially regarding innovation. So maybe the sustainability issue can be solved with innovation, not just innovation in the way that uh, the media is funded, but also innovation in the way that media content is produced. So unfortunately, the journalism schools in North Macedonia are slowly fading away. The number of journalism students that are entering these schools each year is dropping. And uh, this year, I believe it's below 10, which is uh, it's very disappointing, actually. Uh, but uh, I wanted to ask, um, ASU obviously has uh, experience with, with the Balkans, with working in the Balkans, and you particularly have been visiting several countries here in the region. Uh, what, what have been your lessons learned from, from these interactions with the journalists here, with the students here, and with the 
with the media uh, in the Balkan countries. As I've traveled around the Balkans for the past 20 years, and I think I've been to every country there, many of them multiple times, the thing that impresses me the most is that they are not one ounce, one step behind where I am in teaching in the country. As I work with journalism educators in Croatia, in Montenegro, in North Macedonia, in Albania, uh, in Serbia, they're just as smart journalism teachers as I am. And so I feel good about that. Now it's tragic that the journalism schools are, you know, almost ghost towns in North Macedonia. Something needs to change about that. Maybe it's the change in the name of the word. Journalism might be an old school word, and parents say, you don't want to be a journalist, you can't make any money, you're, you know, you're gonna, you're never gonna have any friends, you're gonna be hounded by politicians. But do you want to be a storyteller? Oh yeah, I want to be a story. I think through the partnership that the Cronkite School has with Metamorphosis, we can help across the whole gamut create a new appetite for um, people to tell stories. Call them journalism stories because that's fundamentally what we are. But if we have to change the name slightly to appeal to them, that's not being disingenuous. That's just being contemporary and staying up with the times, which is what we try to do. Okay. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.